we'll mention Arcadia Industrial Park and Storage, Arcadia, Indiana, indoor outdoor storage with flex storage availability. You can call them and reserve your space for that safe and secure storage space location. Indoor storage for your boats, RVs, and your precious automobiles. That could be a Corvette, a Mercedes, a Jaguar, etc. Or outdoor storage always available at Arcadia Industrial Park and Self Storage. You can dial them by telephone at 317-774-1500. Again, that's 317-774-1500. That's Arcadia Self Storage right there in Arcadia, Indiana. Scott Thomas. Scott Thomas Investing, and uh, he makes good investments, and that uh, should be a, a good system right there in Arcadia. So we'll get some warm-up tosses, and we'll mention around the diamond. Keaton Brooks doing the pitching today for Central Catholics. Keaton Brooks wears number 34. Doing the catching is Jackson Chain. Jackson Chain wears number 3. At first base, <clears throat> excuse me, Lucas Gerke wears number 10. At second base, number 11, Mikey Stapleton. At shortstop, number 9, Hudson Gutwein. At third base, Gavin Boutel, wearing number 17. In left field, 41, Isaac Sepinger. In center field, 33, Brent Robbins. And in right field, number 20, Kate Minnick. Stepping into bat. The eight hitter, Grant Weiss, wears number 12. First pitch comes in, strike called. And uh, they'll work it from there. And um, we'll do the best we can. It's a rainy day, but they're playing baseball. It's not too rainy. They're playing ball. Working from the windup, T. Brooks. Pitch comes in. Could be a base hit over the shortstop. Goo wide. You'll be a base hit to left field. Number 12, sophomore. That's Grant Weiss. So, stepping in, second batter here in the top of the third inning. But first, we'll get a courtesy runner. Grant Weiss doing the catching today. So, he can get ready to a courtesy runner. Coach Jarrett Hamill going to go with the runner at first base. So, next batter in the lineup, number three, Corbin Cooley. Corbin Cooley going to bat. A right-handed batter. The work from the pitcher's mound, step in the rubber. Working from the stretch. Now the set position. Keith Brooks' first pitch to Cooley. Outside a ball. Breaking pitch, back door. Did have the breaks he would have liked, but that ball is saturated. It is moist. Hard to get a grip on a moist baseball. One ball, no strikes. Out of the set position, Keith Brooks. Pickoff move, he's going to get him. Pickoff move, he was leaning towards second base. Keaton Brooks makes basically a nonchalant throw over there. A little bit of velocity and gets the pickoff. Coach Hamill going to get picked off with the courtesy runner. And I'm stepping back in. One ball, no strikes. And the base runner is erased. To work from the windup, Keaton Brooks gives the pitch. Swung on, foul ball. Let me get back to the screen. One ball, one strike. Brooks pitching here, second, I should say third outing on the season. Keith Brooks, he's a senior, 6'2", 165. Pitch comes in, swing and a miss. Keith Brooks entering this ball game has 10 innings. He leaves the most innings for the night. Keith Brooks, he's faced 47 batters, 170 pitches. Entering this ball game, pitch comes in low for a ball. Two balls, two strikes. Keith Brooks has given up seven hits. He has given up six runs. Four of those runs were earned. He has walked seven. He struck out six. One of those strikeouts went down looking. He's hit one batter along the way. Pitch comes in low. Ball three. Three and two count. Right there, Corbin Cooley. Peering in, looking at signals. Here comes a three-two pitch. High for ball four. He'll jog down to first base. So we'll see the one hitter step back in. It's going to be Dylan Musser. Dylan Musser playing center field. 
It'll bat lefty. Corbin Messer wearing number five in today's ball game. Torres is wearing number 11 today. They've got different jerseys on. But I think that's the only two players that have a different number from last night's game. So stepping in, left-handed batter. Runner at first base, Corbin Cooley drew a walk. Working from the stretch, Keith Brooks. Now a set. First pitch for Musser, low in the dirt. I should say low in the damp dirt. I tell you what, it's kind of muddy. It's not too bad. Coach Borden, he had the tarps on at home plate and the pitcher's rubber. And it kept them secure. And I will hope we don't need to use any dirt dry and rake that around. Wouldn't want to use a lot of dirt dry on a beautiful diamond. Here comes the pitch. High and inside. Ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Dylan Musser, left-handed batter's box. Dylan Musser wearing number five. Last night wore number 15. Here comes the pitch. He'll take one opposite field. He'll float it to left field. Going to get a beat on it. Isaac Sepinger. Sepinger makes the catch. So jogging back to first base is Corbin Cooley. Two outs here in the top of the third inning. Next batter going to step in. He wears number two. That's Ryan Foster. Ryan Foster plays second base for Benton Central Bison. Right-handed batter. Working from a stretch. Got the signal. Out of the set, Keaton Brooks. First pitch to Foster. Swing and a miss. Breaking pitch. Broke inside, right? Got him on the hands. Swing a miss. Jam, jammed him pretty well. Keith Brooks throwing lefty. Facing the righty. Ryan Foster out of the set. Here comes a second pitch. Swing a miss. So snap throw to first base. Going to get by Lucas Gerke. It's going to go into right field. Going to be picked up on the foul line by Kate Minnie. He's going to take a throw to third base. It's right on target. But a nice slide. At third base, going to get safe there, Corbin Cooley. That was a rocket arm to third base from right field by Kate Minnick. The throw was on time. The slide was good. That slide would have been a, a natural slide straight into third base. He might have been out. So, they're going to have a guy on third base with two out. No balls, two strikes. Knight's going to calm, cool, and collectively try to get this third strike. Keaton Brooks from the stretch. Now the set. Here comes the pitch to Foster. He'll take one back up the middle. Second base. Going to be off the grub of Mikey Stapleton. They're going to get to score the run at home plate. Coming across, scoring the first run of the ball game. Corbin Cooley. So Ben Central takes an early advantage here in the top of the third. And reaching on air is Ryan Foster. Stepping in, three-hitter, Tyler Clemmy. Tyler Clemmy, where's number four? He's doing the pitching in today's ball game. He was uh, responsible for the first three runs on the scoreboard for Benton Central. That was last night. He had a solo shot to center field. From what I understand, it barely cleared the center field fence, landed right on the other side, but you don't rate him. Pitch comes in, strike home. Outside half. Breaking pitch might have been a fastball from Keaton Brooks. Pretty calm, cool, and collected batter is Tyler Clemmy. He's got two home runs on the season in three ball games. Pitch comes in high, ball one. One ball, one strike. Two outs, one run in here in the top of the third inning for Benton Central. Runner at first base is Ryan Foster. Here comes the pitch. A ground ball, shortstop. Hudson Gutwein thought about going to second. He'll go to first. And couldn't go to second base. Knight's not available. And I'm, they're going to have two aboard. And I'm not sure how that'll go with the book. That might be an infield hit. Not quite sure. Not for me to know. Runners at first and second base. Stepping in the bat is going to be Torres. Adrian Torres, wearing number 11 tonight's ball game. Yesterday, as mentioned, he wore number 7. Another senior class member. He's playing third base 
in this ball game. He started pitching last night. Here comes the pitch. He's going to take one deep. It's going to be a foul ball. They're going to give it to Chase Isaac Sepinger. It's going to be up against a foul fence. Actually, it's going to float just out of play. So giving it a, go, a good look there and a good good run for that money. I tell you what, that was Isaac Sepinger. Isaac Sepinger, i got to mention, he's he's playing a good outfield. He played a great outfield at Bishop Chittard. That's the only game the Knights dropped. And that was a 7-6 ball game, almost called for darkness. Bishop Chittard scored, scored the last run with two out. Pitch comes in, breaking pitch, across the dish, knee high. Tail goes 0-2. Torres batting in the fourth position for Coach Jarrett Hamill. Peering in, looking at signals. You know, step off the back. Keith Brooks. He'll jump back in there and set, step back in. And the rubber has a signal from Jackson Kane. 0-2 pitch on the way to Torres. Swain a miss. Actually going to be foul tip in the glove for strike three. Strike three, Jackson Kane right there. And the Knights get out of the inning, but not before. One run scores. That's Corbin Cooley. The Knights are going to bat in the bottom of the third inning. And uh, we do appreciate you tuning in. And I will mention it is a wet game. And um, this game was supposed to start nine minutes from now. Actually, this game was not supposed to start until originally on the schedule at 6 o'clock. They talked to one another, Benton Central, Central Catholic. And uh, they decided to bump the start time up to 5 p.m. It was still... A bit moist out here, some small raindrops. They checked the forecast, and, and um, A.J. Bordenay told me that they checked the forecast, and they thought they had a window of no rain till about 8 p.m. But um, the weatherman is, um, has a secure job. I tell you what, he can, he can mess up and still keep the job. But I wouldn't know anything to do with about meteorology. But we'll also mention around the diamond. We'll try to get this done for Benton Central. Doing the pitching today, we'll be number four, Tyler Clemmy. His catcher is number 12, sophomore athlete, Grant Weiss. At first base, number 18, Balin Holmes. At second base, that's number two, Ryland Foster. At third base, I'll take it back at shortstop, number three, Corbin Cooley. At third base, number 11, Adrian Torres. And in left field is Caleb Kavalowski. In center field is Dylan Musser. Wears number five. And in right field is Brylan Hedden. Brylan Hedden wears number 13. And I'm going to step into bat. It's going to be Keaton Brooks. First pitch from Clemmy. Out back door curveball breaks in. Got an outside part of the dish. Strike cold. So Kavalowski in left field wears number eight. Oh, one kill. Keith Brooks, left-handed batter, right-handed pitcher, Tyler Clemmy. Pitch comes in low, ball one. Lights are on here at Gordon Lemming Field, Lafayette Central Catholic High School. Working from the stretch, that was set. Here comes a one-one pitch from Clemmy. Short out the glove, good stop there. Sophomore catcher, Grant Weiss. Grant Weiss got him a base hit first time at the plate. He's going to look for signals from home plate from the third base dugout. Evidently, they're not using the transmitter. Working from the stretch. Now the sad here comes the 2-1. Going to take a shot base hit on the ground. Gets between third base and shortstop. Goes into left field. Thrown back in by Kavalowski. They'll get into Corbin Cooley. They'll get it back to Tyler Clemming. So base hit. And we'll mention Jack Reisman is going to do the running. He'll be the courtesy runner for Keaton Brooks. Keaton Brooks back in the dugout. And uh, he'll get warm to stay warm in that dugout. I said, what, the temperature is not too bad. The rain is not too bad, but it is raining. And it's kind of a bummer if you're the pitcher. Pitchers got to work extra hard uh, to throw the pitches that coach wants thrown. Working out a stretch, now the set. He squared a bunt, Isaac Seppinger at the plate. He's a nine hitter. He squared a bunt, he'll put the bat, pull the bat back, let it go by, ball one. 
So in on the grass, well, in on the grass at third base is Adrian Torres. Left-handed batter, Izzy Seppinger, pickoff move, first base, back safely. No tag applied by Brylin Holmes. Jack Reisman being called to do the base running. Here in this ballgame, courtesy runner for Keith Brooks. Now the pickoff move, back safely. Tag applied well late of, of Jack Reisman getting back. One ball, no strikes. Working out of set. Here comes the pitch from Clemmy. Low, low from the strike zone. Good stop right there by Grant Weiss. Adrian Torres is living dangerously. We saw Gavin Boutel well in on the grass. Torres going to play the bunt. He's close. Right there, Seppinger could fake the bunt, hit away. He's going to let the ball go by him. Ball three. Three balls, no strikes to Isaac Seppinger. Seppinger going to look for signals. Coach Bordenay, just a couple signals given. Looking for a walk right here. Going to let the ball go by. Pitch comes in, strike called. Three balls, one strike. Seppinger going to see another good pitch right here. Three, one, count. They say that the hitters count. Pitcher's got to throw a strike to stay alive. You know, swing, swing, a miss. Isaac Seppinger, he's... Seppinger's okay. He might have a little bit of a confidence difficulty, but he needs to keep confident. you got to figure every pitch is something that you got to watch. Swing or not. So he'll step back in. Count goes full. Three balls, two strikes. Out of set pickoff move, first base. Back safely is Jack Reisman. Jack Reisman wears number 31. Jack Reisman played in two games. Base hit went the other way. Over the shortstop's head. Three, two, kill. And Jack Reisman is going to make it to third base. And they're going to give that a single, I believe. Might be a double off the bat of Isaac Seppinger. Isaac Seppinger picks up his first hit of the season. He had one plate appearance until that at bat. He's now one for two. I take that back. He's one for one. He walked with that plate appearance. So runners at second and third base for the Knights. Nobody out. Stepping in for 17, Gavin Boutel. Working from a stretch. Now the set. Here's the pitch. They call that a strike. That, that ball was in the left-handed batter spot. So they're going to check the wristband. Tyler Clemmy. They figure when you get one strike, Clemmy's wanting to pitch quick. Gavin Boutel had one foot in, one foot out. Checking signals with Coach Bordney. He'll step back in. Working from a stretch. Here comes the pitch. Ground ball. First base. Holmes, you got to go to home plate with it. Couldn't get the out. And sliding into home plate, didn't bother him. Hit the leg. Jack Reisman had to slide into the bat. So it's a 1-1 one -one contest. Nice batting with nobody out. Runners on the corners. First and third base. We're going to see Hudson Gutwein. Gutwein going to step in. Second time at the plate. Hudson Gutwein. 25 plate appearances, 21 official at bats. He's batting 286. Batting average in that right handed batter's box. Looking at this wristband. Looking at the signal. Working out a stretch, Tyler Clemmy. He'll check the wristband again. He'll check first base. And Hudson Gutwein says, ask for time. He'll step out. Too much concentration time for a batter. To get ready to see a pitch, it's going to be in the low 80s. Pickoff move, first base, back safely. Gavin Butel at first base. Here comes the pitch. Going to get by the catcher, Weiss. Coming in from third base, going to score the second run here in the inning for the Knights. Isaac Seppinger comes in standing up. So, ball gets by the catcher. And you got a feel for the pitcher. Tyler Clemmy, he changed baseballs. But when you change baseballs, that ball gets damp in a hurry. So he's going to work the cleats right there, trying to get the 
the mud off of them. And I'm pretty soon they'll probably have a have a screwdriver or a tongue depressor out there to, to clean shoes off. So um, hopefully that umpire's wanting some more baseballs. He's wanting some dry ones. Coach Fred Rogers is going to jog out. He's cleaning baseballs. He's drying them. Uh, I tell you what, a good good way to go is have your dugout try the baseballs for your pitcher and vice versa. That way you're pitching a ball that's um, responsible by your bench. So, uh, and they're going to step back in. Working from the stretch, now the set. Here's a pitch from Clemmy. Going to pop one. Center field. It's going to be flowed in in the gap. Coming in, trying to make the catch is Musser. Pick it, they pick it up off the surface. Picked up by Corbin Cooley. A good effort right there by Dylan Musser. And the Knights have two aboard. And another run comes in to score for the Knights. Hudson Gutwein. So next batter, we're gonna, Hudson Gutwein is at first base. He'll get the base hit. Difficult play to make in left center field. So Knights have... Uh, no run. My era, the runner was on first base. Now first and second. Just two runs in here in the bottom of the third. Coach Jared Hamill going to walk out. Going to talk with his infield. Tyler Clemmy showing that it's difficult. He's going to try to clean those cleats off in the grass right there. Um, might be a good idea to save some grass from steel spikes. Take a tongue depressor out there. Or maybe a small screwdriver. You can poke that screwdriver back of the mail and into dirt sideways, and it's all safe. Everybody's safe. We'll mention this game is also in part being brought to you by Lisa Stokes Fair. Lisa Stokes Fair, Century 21 Real Estate. When you're thinking about residential or corporate relocations, you know a perfect house can soon become a perfect home. Lisa Stokes Fair would like nothing more than to utilize her 20 plus years experience to help you begin that process. Lisa Stokes Fair, real estate agent, real estate broker. Lisa Stokes Fair, your happiness is her success. And that is true of the same. You can reach her by phone, 317-513-4086. Again, her number is 317-513-4086. Uh, you can call her by phone or you can text message her. That is her cellular phone number. So Tyler Clemmy found something to clean those cleats off. And they'll lay it in the dirt there behind the rubber. That particular spot of this diamond hardly ever gets touched other than the pitcher's foot. Working from the set, here comes the first pitch. To Mikey Stapleton, he squares the bun, it's upstairs, you'll pull the bat back, ball one. So Knights have runners aboard, first and second base. At first base, Hudson Gutwein, here comes the pitch, you're going to square the bun again. Good bun, third baseline is going to be a bun for a base hit. Tyler Clemmy is going to field it. He'll slide with that feet first, and wasn't going to make the play, and that was a good bun. From Mikey Stapleton. That was textbook. So the Knights load the bases. Bases are all occupied. And stepping into bat, it's going to be Caden Minnick. Caden Minnick, left handed batter's box, looking for signals. Home plate. I should have run a jog out. They're going to give a. One of those kickboards has the spikes on it, plastic. They use them in NFL, they use them in baseball. And I'm, I'm sure Tyler Clemmy is plenty happy to have that board out there, plastic board to clean his cleats. So stepping in, Caden Minnick, bases loaded, nobody out. Two runs in, it's a 2-1 ball game, Knights in front. Pitch comes in, knee high, strike call. Step out, look for signals. Caden Minnick has played in all six ball games, 26 at-bats. I should say played appearances, 22. At bats, he's batting 419 in that left-handed batter's box. Here comes the pitch. It'll take one the other way, foul ball. Well out of play. Gonna get the, the fence line. He may never find that one. 
They're going to give it a valiant effort over there in Benton Central Territory. The guys are going to jog over. So Kate Minnick, batting 419. He has a 500 on base percentage. He's got nine hits. He leads the Knights in total hits with nine. Eight are singles. One is a double. He's got seven RBI. He has three runners aboard right here. Here comes the 0-2. He's going to poke one out of play. Staying alive in that batter's box, fighting off the good. Trying to get to the, or fighting off the bad pitches, trying to get through the good pitches. Cade Minnick will step back in. No balls, two strikes. Here comes the pitch outside a ball. So Cade Minnick, one ball, two strikes. He has walked three times on the season. He's been hit by pitch one time. He's got 14 quality at bats. Here comes the pitch. Breaking pitch finishes away. Tried to backdoor a curveball. Difficult effort today. The rain may have subsided. I think the rain, take it, I guess we're under a tarp. I guess that's what I think that. So here comes the 2 2 pitch to Minnick. High and tight, ball three. Cade Minnick started out 0 2 with this at bat. It's now 3 2. Looking at this. Wristband, Tyler Clemmy, senior pitcher for Benton Central, senior athlete, Kate Minnick. Going to call him out, outside edge. That's a breaking pitch, back door. It didn't get much of a break, and he'll set down. And there's one out here in the top of the, excuse me, the bottom of the third inning. Bases loaded, stepping into bat, the four-hitter. Four-hitter for the Knights, number 33, Brent Robbins. Bryn Robbins swinging a good bat. He'll step in. Bryn Robbins, 33, has played in all six ball games. Ground ball, pace hit through the hole there at third base and second and shortstop. Here comes a throw to the plate from left field. Going to be going to call him out. Thought he was under the tag, but they're going to call him out at home plate. The Knights score one run. Second opportunity, slide into plate Hudson Gutwein. He's going to walk back to the dugout a bit dejected, and I don't blame him. So two outs on the diamond. Brent Robbins gets a one RBI base hit, but he'll take second base on the throw to the plate. And the Knights have runners at second and third base. We're watching a replay up here. I'd say, what, Kit? Kit Manning showing the replay. And he, by golly, it looks like he got him. So I'm glad he showed me that. It changed my tune. But it's going to be a shortstop play. Safe at first base. Run comes in to score. Bryn Robbins. Safe at the plate. Ahead first slide. And yeah, we saw the replay. Saw the still photo shot. And I'm safe. Excuse me. He's out at home plate. Nice tag by Grant Weiss. The catcher. So. Runner at first base. So checking into bat right here is number three, Jackson Kane. Lucas Gerke is at first base, going to infield hit. Deep in the hole, it was deep in the hole at shortstop to Corbin Cooley. So Jackson Kane steps in, two out. Runner at first base for the Knights. Long stretch for Tyler Clemmy. Now out of the set position. First pitch to Jackson. Going to poke one foul, right field line. is going to float out of play. No balls, one strike. Bottom of the third inning. Knights have five here in the third. It's a top half. Benton Central got one. The 5-1 ball game, two out. Bottom of the third. Pitch comes in. Jackson Kane. Pitch ends up above the zone. Ball one. Breaking pitch. Just missed a bit up. Peering in, looking at signals. Actually looking at the wristband. Tyler Clemmy out of the set. Here comes the 1-1. To take a strike outside edge. Difficult pitch to hit. 34 inch bat. I need about a 40 inch bat. So one ball, two strikes. Timeout. Left handed or excuse me, right handed batter's box. Jackson Kane. A lot of effort. That pitcher's taking time. It's a lot of staring. A lot of effort to concentrate. Here comes the pitch. Swing and a miss. 
So that'll be the third out here in the inning. Bottom of the third, Knights pick up five runs at the end of three completes. Knights, five. Bison, one. We'll also mention this game is in part being brought to you by your home away from home. Do you sometimes wonder how relaxing it would be to take your family to Florida, but you don't have a place to stay? Well, you can enjoy that home away from home in Davenport, Florida. Enjoy a four-bedroom, four-and-a-half-bath spacious town home with a private pool available for short-term or long-term stays. Davenport, Florida is a vacation destination in northeastern Polk County, close proximity to the Walt Disney theme park that's in Orlando. And if you enjoy the warm sand and the sunny beaches, just 90 minutes separate you from Cocoa Beach, Clearwater Beach, Daytona Beach, and New Smyrna Beaches. You and your family can jump on a plane or hop in a car. When you get to Davenport, Florida, there you are. To inquire, you can direct your emails to 353-CAPTIVA at gmail.com. Again, that's 353-CAPTIVA at gmail.com. 353-C-A-P-T-I-V-A at gmail.com. So they're going to take some warm-up tosses right there. Throw the ball around the outfield. Right field, Cade Minnick throwing the ball with Jonah Gerke outside the line. Jackson Kane has his gear put on. He's back behind the dish. Keaton Brooks going to warm up again from the windup. And I'm going to tell you what, Kit, that um, NFL, you like NFL? NFL, dra the draft is 15 days away. I guess the, all the teams, 32 teams, going to have first pick. And then they'll call it a day. The Bears are going to have first pick. They're talking about Caleb Williams, the quarterback. Bears got rid of Justin Fields. He's a Pittsburgh Steeler now, a backup for Russell. First pitch outside of ball. In the batter's box, number 18, Brylan Holmes, right-handed batter facing the lefty, Keaton Brooks. This jumps in low for ball two. Yeah, that's Russell Wilson. He's an estimated coach. Um, coach there at um, Pittsburgh says he's got the job for now. But Justin Fields going to have an opportunity. This jumps in strike call. Two balls, one strike. Brylin Holmes, first baseman, right-handed batter for Benton Central. Working from the windup. Here comes a pitch from Brooks. Swung on, he'll take one right field. It's going to float out of play. I should say, not out of play, but at the left of the baseline to foul ball. Cade Minnick gives it a long look. So, two balls, two strikes. Keaton Brooks coming back in the count to Brylin Holmes. Tell you what a good baseball player can hit the ball left side of the the diamond, right side of the diamond. Tony Quinn used to do it that way in batting practice. Pitch comes in low. They're going to check, and it was not a check swing. Immediately, home plate umpire checks with first base umpire in a position for the third strike. you got to know right now. So count goes three and two. Three balls, two strikes. Working from the windup, Keith Brooks. Here's the pitch. Ground ball, third base, going to be picked up. The throw across the diamond, going to bring him off the bag and make the catch. And um, Gavin Butel made a good stop. He had to throw on the run, and a um, pretty good wheels there by Brylin Holmes. So it's going to be an infield hit for Holmes. On the hit category so far, we're at the top of the fourth. Ben Central with three hits thus far. The Knights have six. Knights lead the category in the air department with two, and Central with one. Working from the stretch, stepping in, right-handed batter, first pitch, back door, ball one. So Brylin had, 
heading into batter's box, playing right field in today's ball game. Coach Hamill gave him a break behind the dish, working from the stretch. Now the set. Here comes the pitch. Outside edge, strike call, fastball from Keaton Brooks. One ball, one strike. He'll step back in the rubber. Brylin Hedden, batty, full swing, out in front of the rubber. He'll be picked up by Keaton Brooks. He'll get his footing. He'll throw the put out to first base with Lucas Gerke. You can just see right there that the footing is difficult. My guess is Keaton Brooks, when he fielded that, he had to stop right there and had to gingerly change his momentum to throw to first base, and he gets the put out. One out. Stepping in. 17. Corbin Waver. Corbin Waver doing the DHing in the ball game. He's batting for left fielder. Caleb Kavalowski. Working from a stretch. Now the set. Here comes the pitch. Backdoor curveball. He calls strike. That first call strike, that first strike is just a strike to, to get the gentleman to swing the bat. That's taught to the associations. They, take, they talk about that in umpire classrooms. One ball, no strikes. Alice here's the pitch from Brooks. Swing and a miss. So, one ball, two strikes. Two strikes on the batter. A step back in. 17, Corbin. Corbin Waver, the DH. Here comes the 0-2 pitch from Brooks. Breaking pitch and no call. No call. Evidently a ball. Pitch looked good. But we didn't see the vertical part of the pitch. One ball, two strikes. We are straight behind home plate. And we are elevated with a very nice vantage point. Pickoff move at second base. A nice pickoff move. From Keaton Brooks, just getting back safely. Ben Central. 1-2 count. He'll step back in. Corbin Weber. Wearing number 17. Here comes a 1-2 pitch from Brooks. Pitch comes in. Strike called. He'll set him down looking. There are two out here in the top of the fourth. So the next batter going to step in. Number 12, he's doing the catching. Just a sophomore athlete. Plays the baseball game well. Coach Hamill has two sophomores. And Grant Weiss is one of them. He started last night. He's playing the catcher position. Tonight, here comes the pitch. Pitch comes in. Strike call. Let one go by. No balls. One strike. Two out. Runner at second base for the Bison. Working from the stretch, peering in, looking at signals. Keaton Brooks checks second base out of the stretch. Now the set. Here comes the old one pitch. Take a shot to left field. It's going to get over the head of Seppinger. You know, pick it up before it gets to the warning track. It's going to be an RBI double off the bat of sophomore Grant Weiss. Grant Weiss kind of cementing him a spot in the lineup, at least for the early season. We'll hope he can stay in. So next batter going to step in. It's going to be number three, Corbin Cooley. Corbin Cooley, the shortstop. Runner at second base is Grant Weiss. He's got an RBI here in the inning. Bison have one run in. Corbin Cooley, right-handed batter. Weiss at second base doing the base running. Out of the set, Keaton Brooks, here's the pitch. Breaking pitch, back door. No swing in there for a strike. Corbin Cooley bats in the ninth position. Shortstop. Working from the stretch, Keith Brooks has to signal. Out of the stretch, he'll check second base. Out of the set, here's the pitch. Good block there. Short off the glove, Jackson Kane. Blocks it out in front of him. Going to ask for a new baseball. So I'm going to toss that one back to the first base dugout. Knights will try to dry that baseball. Drying baseballs and drying footballs, difficult task uh, for sure.
sure. One ball, one strike. We're going to have a stretch. Now the set. Time called. We're going to do the right-handed batter's box, Corbin Cooley. So he'll step back in. Home plate umpire makes the ball live. We believe so. And runner at second base is Grant Weiss. Grant Weiss, second base, balls live. Working from a stretch, Keith Brooks. Right-handed batter, Corbin Cooley, has the signal. Check second base out of the stretch. Now the set. Here comes a 1-1 pitch. Swain a miss, breaking pitch. Started that out at the middle of the plate. It broke away. Excuse me, it broke down and tight. Corbin Cooley. Pretty good spot right there for Keaton Brooks. Count goes 1-2. As the signal from Jackson Kane. They're going to call a balk. They're going to call a balk. Coach Bordnay, he's going to walk out of the dugout. He's going to ask him what he saw. And that's the terminology to speak to an umpire. What did you see? And he's going to let him know. And then Coach Bordnay is going to actually double check here, make sure the, the call was made correctly. And home plate umpire walks away from Coach Bordnay. Says he's going. They're going to play baseball, and then they're going to live with the balk. So Grant Weiss moves to third base. It's a one-two count. We'll see if Keith Brooks can uh, qualify for another strike. Low for a ball. Good block once again. Jackson Kane. He'll get another baseball. So they'll bring a baseball over. And they'll work it from there. And my wife says she's at home. She can hear the ball game. We're thankful. Uh, appreciate that. Appreciate Robbie Kendall. Robbie Kendall of AudioSportsOnline.net. He makes it all possible. He's a good man. 2-2 two -two count. Out of the set, here's the pitch. He'll swing on, foul it back, right side, out of play. Sustain in the box, fighting him off. Corbin Cooley, right-handed batter, shortstop for Benton Central. Working out a stretch. Now the set. 2-2 two -two pitch again. Swing and a miss. Breaking pitch. Jackson Kane cleans it. And the Knights are in the dugout. Knights are going to bat here in the bottom of the fourth. Benton Central come up with one run here in the top half of the fourth inning. After three and a half, Knights five. Bison 2. And we'll also mention this game is in part being brought to you by Reynolds Farm Equipment. Reynolds Farm Equipment. Since 1955, Reynolds Farm Equipment, your central Indiana equipment dealer, serving customers and the community. Since 1955, Reynolds Farm Equipment, family owned and operated. Reynolds Farm Equipment supplies farmers, and landscapers, contractors, and homeowners of Central Indiana with the full line of new and used John Deere products. They have parts and service for agriculture, residential, and commercial construction equipment. The hours of operation at Reynolds Farm Equipment, Monday through Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m., Saturday, 7.30 a.m. to 12 noon, they're closed on Sunday. Reynolds Farm Equipment is located right there along US 31 in northern Hamilton County. 1451 East, 276th Street, Atlanta, Indiana. It's a rural Atlanta, Indiana address, 46031. That's in Hamilton County. You can stop by Reynolds Farm Equipment. They're inside right there. It's Titus Bakery and Deli. You can enjoy breakfast and or lunch. Titus Bakery and Deli. They're open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. On Saturday, they're open 7 a.m. to 12 noon. And that's Reynolds Farm Equipment and Titus Bakery and Deli. Stepping in for the night is Keaton Brooks. Keaton Brooks is going to step back in. And he'll work from there. Left-handed batter. Tyler Clemmy. Gets the ball handed to him by, by Cooley, Gorman Cooley. Checking the wristband, Tyler Clemmy. Clemmy pitching in the bottom of the fourth. 
pitch comes in, back up the middle, fly ball is going to be Musser. He'll come in, he'll dive forward and make the catch. And I sprawl out forward, and it's another one of those baseballs that only a center field can see coming straight at you. So Brent Robbins does that well also. Gets good beat off the bat. There's one out here at the bottom of the fourth. Stepping in, I see Seppinger. Seppinger's left-handed batter's box. Got himself aboard last time at the plate with a hit. Working out a stretch. Now the set. First pitch to Seppinger for a strike. Taken for a strike. Let's one go by. He'll step back in. Pretty good sized young man, listed at six foot three, two hundred pounds. He's pretty stout. Here comes a pitch from Clemmy. Outside a ball, fastball misses. One ball, one strike. Steps back in. Isaac Seppinger checking the wristband. Tyler Clemmy out of the set. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Me foul tip in the glove. In the glove, Grant Weiss. It's also just a strike. So count goes one and two. Out of set, Tyler Clemmy to Seppinger. High for ball two. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Checking the wristband, Tyler Clemmy. Working from the stretch, now the set. Here comes a 2-2 two -two to Seppinger. Outside of ball. Three balls, two strikes. You're standing, sitting there holding the baseball. Actually standing there as a pitcher. And you're, you're knowing it's kind of damp. It kind of, kind of makes it difficult to make the pitch. 3-2 count. Here comes a pitch to Seppinger. Inside tall, ball four. Seppinger drops the bat, runs to first base. Next batter in the lineup is going to be Gavin Boutel. Gavin Boutel swinging a good bat for the Knights. Gavin Boutel, 20 plate appearances, 18 at-bats. He's batting 389 on the season, 421 on base percentage. He's got seven hits. They're all singles. Working out stretch, now the set. Here comes the pitch. High for ball one. Gavin Boutel, he's got one RBI. He's got two runs scored. He's... He's walked once, he's been hit by pitch once, and he has nine quality at-bats. Pitch comes in high, ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Coach Bourdain is going to get quite a few signals there. Runner at first base for the Knights is Isaac Seppinger. He'll get back safely. Pickoff move, he had plenty of time. Probably could get another half step or a whole step. Seppinger getting that lead. Foot to foot. Not going to cross over. Working from the stretch. Now the set. Square to bun is Boutel. Coming in for third base is Torres. Torres was right in front. I tell you what, he's pretty darn close, isn't he, Kit? 20 feet off the plate, Kit says. My goodness. Man, that, that could be a bad problem. Here comes the pitch. Outside edge, strike call. A 3 0 count as a gimme pitch. Count goes 3 and 1. Three balls, one strike. Right handed batter, Gavin Butel. Out of the set, Clemmy. Here's the 3 1. Strike 2. Outer half. Count goes full at 3 and 2. Looking at first base, out of stretch. Now the set for Clemmy. Here's the pitch to Gavin. Foul ball, right foul fence. Seppinger was on his horse. He'll jog back to first base. 3-2 count once again. Gavin Boutel, one foot in, one foot out. IHSAA asked for that about three, four, maybe five, six years ago to take singles. Pickoff move, first base, Seppinger back easily. Trying to slow, speed the game up. It's, here comes a pitch, 3-2. Low for ball four. Gavin Butel going to jog down to first base. Knights have two aboard with one out. Gavin Butel at first base. Isaac Seppinger at second base. 
going to call time out on dive and Grant Weiss is going to jog out. Going to talk with his senior pitcher. Grant Weiss, sophomore, going to give some encouragement right there to Tyler Clemmy. So the home plate umpire walks out. We're going to bring him back and continue the ball game. Hudson Gutwein going to bat. Third time at the plate in today's ball game. Right-handed batter. Hudson Gutwein, 5'11", 175. First pitch from Clemmy. Outside, ball one. 26 plate appearances, 21 official at-bats. Gutwein batting 286 on the season. Six hits, six singles, and he has a double. Swing and a miss. So, Hudson Gutwein leads the team in hit by pitches. He's been hit three times along the way. Here comes the 1-1 pitch. Breaking pitch, well placed, strike called. Tyler Clemmy, count goes 1-2 and two to Gutwein. Two aboard, first and second. Bottom of the fourth inning, one out. Long stretch there. And I'm going to call time, Gutwein. I don't blame him. Tyler Clemmy was looking at that that wrist bracelet for the coordinates for what the pitch would be. He looked at it a long time, just a pitch. Going to be shortstop, base hit. Base hit, going to get by the glove of Corbin Cooley. Corbin Cooley was more interested in holding the runner at second base. That was Sepinger. And holding the runner, I think, is the reason he probably didn't catch that line shot back at him. It was to his right. He had to move a little bit. But um, I think that Sepinger at second base had something to do with that base hit by Hudson Gutwein. So one out. Bases are loaded for the Knights. Next batter is Mikey Stapleton. Last year, Mikey Stapleton took one out of here down the left field line. As a freshman, he comes a pitch. Checks his swing. Short hop. They're going to check at first base. They're check the, They're going to call it a strike. C position umpire. Going to call it a strike on a right-handed batter. That's a difficult one to make. He, he reluctantly held the hand up as a strike. That's just the first strike. Oh, one count to Stapleton. Out of set. Here comes a pitch from Clemmy. Breaking pitch, well placed. Strike called. Count goes 0-2. Stapleton, he only needs one pitch. Stapleton batting in the second position for the Knights. We're going to have a stretch. Trying to start early right there. Clemmy likes to pitch early. He likes to be he likes to be standing in the set position when the batter steps in. So he'll be in a set now. Here comes the 0-2 to Stapleton. He'll go ground ball, shortstop, Corbin Cooley. Couldn't handle it. Going to go off his glove. Going to roll right up off his glove and into the grass, shallow, right behind second base. So probably going to be an air, reached on air by Mikey Stapleton. But his on-base percentage is climbing with that play. So Knights have him loaded once again. One run in, so it's going to be an RBI. Off the bat of Mikey Stapleson. Peering in, looking at signals, actually looking at the wristband. Stepping in, Kate Minnick, right fielder. First pitch comes in low. Good block by the sophomore catcher, Grant Weiss. Kate Minnick, he plays some summer ball. He plays a lot of summer ball with several of the guys on the Benton Central team. Ryland Holmes at first base. They are teammates in the summertime. One ball, no strikes. Here comes the pitch. Swing and a miss. Foul tip. Foul tip in the glove. Still a strike. One ball, one strike. Many steps back in. Left-handed batter spots. Checking the wristband. Tyler Clemmy. Out of the set position. Checks third base. Here's the pitch. Inside a ball. Kate Minnick. Staying still right there. Wanted to give the home plate umpire a chance to see how close that was. It was he stepped away. It might have been a called strike. Count goes two and one. Here comes the pitch. Ground ball. Foul of first.
first base to go out foul territory. Coach Ryan Johnson is going to retrieve it. Coach Ryan Johnson, he works a lot in the summertime. He handles a lot of the duties to run tournaments. That guy works feverishly. I found that out. They allowed me to up a couple games. Out of the set position, Clemmy here at the pitch. Foul ball. But it bounce off the catcher's mask. I believe so. And it bounces high to the screen. And Grant Weiss is okay. Home plate umpire is going to hand deliver a baseball to Tyler Clemmy. Going to give Grant Weiss an opportunity to shake that off. He's fine. Back behind the dish, 2-2 two, two count. Ball's made live. Working from the stretch. Now the set. Here comes the pitch. Ground ball, shortstop. Cooley's going to field it. No time to go to second and throw a high throw. And it'll go out of play. And uh, that's a play from the infield. So uh, I'm quite sure. I'm wondering. Uh, actually, Caden Minich is going to go to second base. A guy at second base, I believe, gets home plate. But he's going to stay at third. Corbin Cooley, disappointed. If this was a dry field, that ball would have been to first base on a dime. But a moist ball, every throw goes over the foul fence, just right side of the Knights' dugout. The Knights go up another 90 feet. Three runs in here in the bottom of the fourth. Brent Robbins, the batter. We're going to have a stretch now to set. Here's first pitch to Robbins. He'll take it to right field down the line. It's going to be just foul. Brent Robbins taking the ball right side quite well this season. Brent Robbins got the game-winning base hit to right field. That was on a dime a few games back. Uh, one one run comes in, game over. So that was it. He'll step back in. Brent Robbins, about like Tony Quinn, as mentioned. Batting practice, he practiced going to right field and going to left field. Position hitting. Here comes the pitch. Foul back to the screen. Healthy cut. Brent Robbins goes down to count 0-2. Brent Robbins on the season. He's played in all six games. Brent Robbins 5'10", 195. I think I mentioned this before. Versus Tip the Blue Devils football game. Brent Robbins got two pick sixes. And Clemmy's trying to pitch quick again. Stepping in the box was Brent Robbins, and Clemmy was taking his set position when he stepped in. Home plate umpire holds it up. Here comes the pitch. Outside edge, strike called. He'll jog back to the dugout. Two outs. Two outs, bottom of the fourth inning. 8-2 contest. Knights in front. Stepping in, Lucas Gerke. Checking the wristband, Tyler Clemmy. Runners at second and third base with two out. Pitch comes in. Going to get by the wickets. They go back halfway to the screen. Run comes in from third base. Mikey Stapleton is going to score the run. And I'm Grant Weiss. That's uh, a difficult play right there. He's going to allow the run. He's just a sophomore. I think I've spoken enough of, um, of his ability. He's got plenty of ball wet. One ball, no strikes. Lucas Gerke. Runner at third base for the Knights. Third base runner is Kate Minnick. Here comes the pitch. Breaking pitch finished upstairs. Ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Lucas Gerke. Bottom of the fourth. Three, excuse me, four runs in. Hit in the fourth. Pitch comes in, outside edge. Strike called. Two and one. Kate Minnick getting some instruction right there at third base by Coach Bordney. Working from a stretch. Now the set. Here comes a two one pitch. Inside edge. Going to call a strike. Pretty close to the plate. Lucas Gerke. Working the wristband right there. Now out of the set position. Clement, here's the pitch. Going to foul one back. Left side out of play from the left-handed bat of Lucas Gerke. 2-2 two, two count, two outs. He'll step back in. Checking the wristband. Steps back off the rubber, steps back in. Tyler Clemmy. 
working out a set. Here comes a 2-2 pitch. He'll foul one back again, left side out of play. And that nearly hit the young man retrieving the earlier, the previous baseball. The home plate umpire is going to have to walk to the dugout and get a baseball replenishment. So these baseballs here are not souvenir. They turn them back in. But some of them go without ever being found. Sometimes you find them when you're mowing. Two, two counts, two outs out of a set position. Clemmy, here's the pitch. You take a base hit, went the other way, left field, to the grass, and an RBI base hit for Lucas Gerke. Ball thrown back in by Caleb Kavalowski. Still two outs. A two out base hit RBI for Gerke. Lucas Gerke picks up RBI number six of the season. Stepping in the bat, Jackson Kane. Jackson Kane stepping in, right handed batter. Jackson Kane batting 316 in that right handed batter's box. He's got a 440 on base percentage. Here comes the pitch. Short hops a glove, good block by Grant Weiss, the catcher. One ball, no strikes. Tyler Clemmy pitching. Here in the bottom of the fourth, he'll work from the stretch. Check that wristband. Now the set. Here comes the 1-0 pitch to Jackson. Swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. Signals given by Coach Bordney. Let's see if Lucas Gerke is on his horse here. Here comes the pitch. Outside of ball. Two balls, one strike. Two balls, one strike. Jackson Kane batting the bottom of the fourth. We're going to outstretch. Now the set. Here comes the pitch. Inside a ball. That was tight. Jackson had to move. Limbo style. We'll mention Lucas Gerke has one stolen base of the season. He's been caught stealing one time also. Pickoff move. First base, back safely, head first. Lucas Gerke saves. Tag was applied by Brylin Holmes. It was a good play, working out a stretch. Three balls, one strike, here to the pitch. Swing and a miss. Count goes full at three and two. Three, two count, Jackson Kane. Two out, bottom of the fourth. Five runs in for the Knights. Checking the wristband out of stretch. Checks first base. Now the set position. Here comes the 3-2 pitch. He's going to poke one. He's going to move skyward. It's going to be called for by a second baseman. To step out in the grass a few steps and make the catch. That catch made by Ryan Foster. So the Knights come up with five runs at the bottom of the fourth. After four complete, Knights 10 Bison, too. We'll also mention this game is in part being brought to you by FritzandFishers.com. They buy, they sell, and they trade. They also help you with financing. Quality cars, trucks, and SUVs. Preferred low mileage and one owner automobiles. They have two Hamilton County, Indiana locations. One is Fritz and Fishers. At 8599 East 116th Street. You can dial them up there at 317 842 2228. Also, I mentioned that the phone number is 317 842 2228. We'll mention in Noblesville, that's along State Road 32, between Noblesville and Westfield, right there at Mill Creek Road. You can dial them up there at 317-773-2232. Again, their number there along State Road 32 is 317-773-2232. You can go online. You can look at their vehicles. You can lay down on your on your couch with your um, iPad and check out what the vehicles they have available. Or you can stop by and visit them on site. Fritz and 
dot com. That's F R I T Z. So they're taking a break in the action right here before the top of the fifth. And they, they brought some dirt dry out. They're helping out the pitcher's rubber. The pitcher is probably the most important player in a baseball game. If he can't throw strikes, you can't hit the bat or hit the ball. And uh, that's a big time problem. And uh, way back when, I remember some softball games. Saw some softball games, probably sixth grade and a bit under. And they couldn't throw strikes, and they threw a lot of balls. They walked a lot of batters. Them games ended up in the 30s for a score. That's that's quite boring. So they're throwing some dirt dry down there. Both umpires checking it out. So it's going to be top of the fifth inning. Bison have scored one in each of the third and the fourth inning. Knights came up with five in the third and five in the fourth. So the base hit department, Ben Central has five in the ball game. Knights have eight. In the air department, Ben Central with three, Central Catholic with two. So Ben, I should say, Brooks, Keith Brooks, back out on the pitcher's rubber, working in the top of the fifth. So they're going to walk off the field with the rake. Coach Borne going to carry half a bag or a little more of the dirt dry that they didn't use. And the Knights and the Bison try to get this game in. A two-game set for West Division teams. As you know, Twin Lakes could play either of the first game scheduled. They got one in that week, and then they rescheduled the second game. It'll be at West Lafayette on May the 7th. They'll reschedule that on May the 7th. They'll play their second game versus Twin Lakes. That'll be an away game. So stepping into bat, Ben Central. Dylan Musser, wearing number five, he's the center fielder. Stepping off the back of the rubber. They got a pitching bullpen activity, and they got the young young gentleman there um, doing the protecting. Working from a stretch, here comes the pitch. I should say the windup, this comes in, strike called. No balls, one strike. Keaton Brooks steps back on the rubber. Two feet on. Gets the signal. Here comes a wide. Here comes the 0-1. Low for ball one. One ball, one strike. Nobody out. First batter, Dylan Musser, here in the top of the fifth. Here comes a pitch from Brooks. Outside, ball two. Keaton Brooks. Has about that 2 o'clock arm slot on his delivery. The ball went across the plate outside. Here's the pitch. Going to pop one up. Foul territory. Gavin Butel giving it a look. It's going to float out of play. Just out of play. Gavin Butel being careful with that foul fence. And the ball goes out of play. Home plate umpire was right over there to verify a catch or a no catch. Two balls, two strikes. Gavin Butel back out to third base. T. Brooks steps back on the rubber. 2 2 count to Musser. Here comes a 2 2 pitch. You know, pop one, shortstop, and it can be called by third baseman. Uh, third base makes a catch. Gavin Butel, there's one out here in the top of the fifth. Next batter going to step in. It's going to be number two, Ryan Foster. Ryan Foster plays second base. Right-handed batter's box. They're going to look for signals. Coach Hamill. Coach Hamill is going to ask that youngster to, to back up a little bit over by the foul fence. That youngster is the son of an assistant coach for the Bison. Met both of them last night. Pitch comes in outside, ball one. One ball, no strikes. Peering in, looking at signals out of the wide up. Here's the pitch from Brooks. Inside a ball. Count goes 2-0. and Ryan Foster. Ryan Foster, second baseman. He'll step back in. Keaton Brooks, picking up the signal. Here comes the 2-0 pitch. 
Swung on, ground ball. Shortstop, Hudson Gutwein, gators it. Throws across a diamond, gets the put out. With Lucas Gerke, there are two out. Next batter going to step in, Tyler Clemmy. Tyler Clemmy, I think everybody in the whole ballpark knows he swings a good bat. Tyler Clemmy also plays summer ball with Kate Minnick. He'll step in, left-handed batter. Straightaway stance. Here comes a wide in the pitch from Brooks. Foul ball back to the screen. No balls, one strike. Tyler Clemmy. They're wearing those sleeveless jerseys, the black hat shirts underneath. Some of them have the whole shirt. Here comes the pitch. Breaking pitch in there for a strike. Tyler Clemmy lets that one go by. Count goes 0-2. Two out. Top of the fifth inning. We're going to wind up. Here's the pitch. Outside, ball one. One ball, two strikes. Tyler Clemmy steps back in. Pete Brooks. Here comes Brooks. The one-two pitch. Breaking pitch just missed. 2-2. Two, 2-2 two. Two, two counts to Clemmy. Left-handed batter facing the lefty pitcher, Keaton Brooks. 2-2. Two, two. two out. Here's the pitch. Outside ball three. So Tyler Clemmy goes down to count 0-2 when he's climbed all the way back to a full count. 3-2 pitch on the way. He'll take a base hit between second base and first base. That was a rocket shot. Probably no more than six feet tall. Got you the grass. So Tyler Clemmy gets himself aboard with the base hit. Next batter is going to step in. It's going to be Adrian Torres after the baseball replenishment at home plate. Adrian Torres, as mentioned, wearing number 11 in these dark uniforms. He wears number 7 with his home jersey. Senior class member plays third base. As mentioned, he started the, on the pitcher's mound last night at Penn Central. Here comes the pitch. Swing and a miss. No balls, one strike. Adrian Torres. Step back in. Working from the stretch. Keith Brooks now the set. Here comes the 0-1 pitch. Ground ball, third base, down to tell. Right up the line, he'll throw across a diamond. He'll get the put out with Lucas Gerke. So three outs here in the top of the fifth inning. Ben Central leave one runner aboard, and the Knights are going to bat in the bottom of the fifth. This game is also in part being brought to you by Thomas Docks Incorporated. High-quality, custom-built waterfront products and services. They build docks, boat lifts, seawalls, dock accessories, marine services, etc. Thomas Docks Incorporated. ThomasDocks.com. You can find them at 20799 Riverwood Avenue, Biblesville, Indiana, 46062. Thomas Docks, locally owned and operated since 1993. You can dial them up at 317. 317- 774-3790. Again, that's Thomas Docks, 317-774-3790. They're open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., but they will meet you by appointment. Give them a call. We'll also mention Thomas Docks. Choose the company that has the equipment to maintain and service new and existing waterfront projects. They work in the state of Indiana, Illinois, Ohio, Michigan, Kentucky, with capabilities to work all across the United States. That's Thomas Docks in Noblesville. I've seen their docks. Their docks are tremendous. They use the galvanized steel in them. They last a long time. So they'll work even up here. 
probably over in Monticello. I'm sure they've worked well, right there on Lake Freeman and Lake Shaper. They worked everywhere. So they get some warm up tosses. New pitcher on the pitchers rubber is Caleb Cavalowski. Cavalowski doing the pitching. He came in last night, did just a bit of pitching. He came in from left field today, getting some warm up tosses. And then I'll throw one down to second base. So, first batter here at the bottom of the fifth is going to be number 34, Keaton Brooks. Keaton Brooks going to step in. Keaton Brooks on base percentage, He's climbing that at 200. He's got two hits. Two singles. He's got three hits on the season. He's got a double. Left-handed bat, right-handed pitcher. Kavalowski, here's the pitch. Inside half, strike called. No balls, one strike. Caleb Kavalowski. Stretching out right there. Working from the, the stretch, nobody on. Pitch comes in low for ball one. Pitching from the stretch, I've wondered why people do that. My son says, Dad, that's because the pitcher is primarily a relief pitcher. Doesn't ever see the windup for the most part. So pitch comes in high for ball two. Two balls, one strike. First batter to the bottom of the fifth for the Knights. Working from the set, here comes the pitch. Full swing, foul ball, left side. Two balls, two strikes. Keaton Brooks, he's gone the distance on the pitcher's rubber. He's walked one time. And um, he's been hit by pitch three times. Go back up the middle. Can be clubbed right there by Kavalowski. Underhanded toss to first base. Ryland Holmes. And I think I misspoke there. Keaton Brooks has um, reached on the air. Three times, he's got one fielder's choice. There's one out here in the bottom of the fifth. Next batter going to step in, Isaac Seppinger. Left-handed batter, Isaac Seppinger, swinging a good bat. Isaac Seppinger batting in the eighth position. Pitch comes in, inside half, strike called. So, Kavalowski is challenging Isaac Seppinger, that Pretty much close to his wheelhouse. Here comes the pitch. Back to a curveball. Misses outside. One ball, one strike. Isaac Seppinger. Isaac Seppinger took one a long way last night for a sacrifice. Here comes the pitch. You know, pop this one up. Airborne, foul territory, working at the left side in front of the dugout. Torres. Torres made that. Feet, foot, slide. That's the way to catch a, a foul ball. Has saved your body. And that's well done. The ball goes out of play. One ball, two strikes. Isaac Seppinger steps back in. Caleb Kavalowski back in the rubber. Looking at singles. Working from a stretch. Now the set. Here comes the one, two pitch. He's going to poke one. Shortstop, that's going to be third base. Adrian Torres makes an easy catch. Two out here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Gavin Butel going to step in. Right-handed batter's box. Gavin Butel batting 389. He's at 421 on base percentage. As mentioned, he has seven hits entering the ball game. They're all singles. Here comes the pitch from Kavalowski. Fastball right down Meridian, strike call. Back in the rubber, peering in, looking at singles. Caleb Kavalowski out of the set. Here comes the pitch. Going to pop one right side. Going to get the grass. Second baseman, give, give it a call. Couldn't make the play. It's got to be a single. Good effort behind first base by Ryan Foster. He laid out, couldn't make the catch. And Gavin Boutel, the base hit. So next batter going to step in, the one hitter for the Knights. Number nine, Hudson Gutwein. Last time up, Hudson Gutwein got himself aboard. There are two out. 
here in the bottom of the fifth. Caleb Kavalowski back in the rubber. He's got a runner on base. First base checks a runner. Here comes a pitch to Hudson Gutwein. Just above the zone, ball one. One ball, no strikes. Gutwein steps back in. Righty face and a righty. Here comes the pitch from Kavalowski. Going to be a hit by pitch. In that right-handed batter's box, it was a fastball. And then Hudson Gutwein jogs down to first base, acts like nothing ever happened. So Mikey Stapleton going to bat. He's a two-hitter for the Knights. Two aboard, two out. Mikey Stapleton wears number 11. He's a sophomore by class. 5'11", 165. He's a stout young man. Likes to play the football game. Two, he's batting 263 on the season. 417 on base. He's got five hits. Four are singles. He's got one double. First pitch to Stapleton. Outside edge, strike call. No balls, one strike. Two out, Knights have two aboard, first and second base. Working out a set, check second base. Here's the pitch to Stapleton. Ground ball, third base. Can be fielded by Torres, he'll flip it to second base. Torres to Foster. And the Knights are recorded. Three outs on the Knights. Knights going to play defensively in the top of the sixth. And Ben Central playing good defense in the bottom of the fifth. We'll mention at the end of five complete, Knights 10, Bison 2. And we'll also mention this game is in part being brought to you by Camino and Company. Camino and Company, that's Camino dash a n d dash company dot com camino and company is in downtown noblesville indiana camino and company a mobile flower shop brought to you by local flower farmers and providers small business partners and the cc founders the 1984 el camino which belongs to carly's grandpa Carly's Grandpa in the 1984 El Camino. That's an SS El Camino. And the goal of Camino and Company is to please each customer from their concept to Camino and Company's completion. You can explore their website. Again, their website is Camino dash A N D dash company dot com. Camino and Company now booking 2024 brides. They'll help you out. Uh, with your wedding, and they'll make it good. You can contact them via the website. So we're listening to some a little bit of Stray Cats. Stray Cats right there. Rock this town. That's been a good one. Back from the 80s. And now stepping into bat is Brylan Holmes. Brylan Holmes playing first base in the ball game. First pitch from Brooks. Backdoor curveball, strike call. Brylon Holmes, right-handed batter's box. Lefty pitcher, Bree Keaton Brooks, he's gone the distance. We're in the top of the sixth. Here's the pitch. Backdoor curveball, called strike. Count goes 0-2. No balls, two strikes. Keaton Brooks, pitch from the windup, nobody on. Here's the pitch. Backdoor curveball, misses outside. One ball, two strikes. Ryland Holmes steps back in. Here comes a pitch from Brooks. Swing a miss. They'll set him down swinging. There's one out here at the top of the sixth. Next batter going to step in. Stepping in. Number 13. He's playing right field in today's ball game. Brylan Head. Right-handed batter. Steps in. A bit of an open stance. He'll close on the approach. First pitch from Brooks. Ground ball. First base can be fielded by Gerke. He'll go flip it to the pitcher, Keaton Brooks, covering nicely. Two outs here at the top of the six. So Bison is going to send to the plate. Number 17, Corbin Wade. 
Corbin Wade doing the DHing in the ball game. Toughest job for a DH is to stay loose in the dugout because you're not playing the field. Here comes the pitch. Fouled back. Pretty close. And then ball off the barn back there. You're going to step back in. Corbin Wade, right handed batter. 0 oh, 1 count. Brooks out of the windup. Here's the pitch. Outside a ball. One ball, one strike. Rain has let up just a, quite a bit. I see an umbrella still up over there. Here comes a pitch from Brooks. Backdoor curveball just misses. Two balls, one strike. Corbin Wade, the batter's box. Working from the stretch. I'm sure the windup. My here, here comes a pitch. The foul one back. They're the same location. Two two count. Seventeen. Corbin Waver. Corbin Waver. Right handed batter's box. My notes are very shot right here. Here comes the pitch. Short opposite club. Jackson Kane kept it in front of him. Count goes full at three and two. Three balls, two strikes. Corbin Waver. Right handed batter's box. Stepping back on the rubber. Keep. Brooks. 3 2. Corbin Waver wants time. Step back in. Ball's live. 3 2. Count. Two out. Top of the six. Here's the pitch. Foul ball back to the screen. Quality at bat in the works for Benton Central Bison. Corbin Waver. He's going to step back in with that 3 2 count once again. We're going to the wind up. Here's the pitch for Brooks. He's going to take a base hit. We'll see if we're left field. Got some air under it. Coming in to make the play is Isaac Seppinger. And Corbin Waver with a pretty good stroke. And I'm caught in left field. Not a lot of elevation for out number three. We're to the bottom of the sixth inning. Knight's going to bat. It's a 10 2 contest. And we'll also mention once again that this game is in part. Being brought to you by Sign Production. Sign Production, a business with a good sign, is a sign of good business. Computer-generated, painted, and sandblasted signs. Billboard advertising. Large format signage. Vehicle graphics and lettering. Banners and window lettering. Sign Production, since 1985. You can reach them by phone at 317-946. 2424. Again, that's 317 946 2424. You can call them by phone or you can text message them at that same number. So I guess warm up down the bullpen area for the Knights. I think Gus Sandberg is down there. We'll see who's going to take the rubber right there, stand on top of it. They got maybe a couple going. Jack Reisman, Kit says. So, Reisman's getting loose down there. Right-hander. Where's number 31? Reisman pretty much entered the game in the first inning. Might have been, I'd say that back, right but the second, or second inning as a base runner at first base. Uh, running for, I think it was um, Keith Brooks. Courtesy runner. So, he's getting warmed up down there. We'll see if he comes in the seventh. Here comes the pitch. Low for ball one. Or maybe that was a late strike call. So I don't know. So I'm Kate Minnick going to get a late strike call right there. I think uh, the home plate umpire was checking on Grant Weiss to make sure everything was there because the ball got loose. And he, that's why the late strike signal was given. Oh, one count to Kate Minnick. He only needs one. Working from the stretch. That's now the set. Kavalowski inside a ball, nearly got him. Nearly got Kate Minnick last year. Kate Minnick led the team with hit by pitches. He got hit nine times. Looking out of set, here's a 1 1 pitch. Strike called. This right there, borderline, it's got to be right below the kneecaps 
strike called. I said, why we? I'd rather swing in a low strike than have to be made swing at a tall strike. Inside, tight. Ball two. Two balls, two strikes. Kate Minnick would make a good umpire. He knows the strike zone. Here comes a 2-2. Two -two. Be a crown ball in the infield. Be fielded by first baseman Holmes. He'll flip it to the pitcher. Tabalowski, and they'll get the put out. Covering the bag nicely right there was Tabalowski. And there are one out. One out here in the bottom of the six. Next batter going to be Bren Robbins. Bren Robbins looking at signals. None given. He's going to step in. Bren Robbins' right-handed batter on deck is Lucas Gerke. Out of the set, Kavalowski, first pitch to Robbins. Breaking pitch, didn't get the grip he wanted. Probably that moist baseball finished high in the box with Bren Robbins. Count goes 1-0. and oh. One ball, no strikes, here's the pitch. Breaking pitch, well outside, outside at ball two. Two balls, no strikes. They're calling for rain tomorrow. We'll see what happens. Two balls, no strikes. Here's the pitch. Foul ball out of play. Foul ball out of play. Knights won't play again until Saturday. They'll have two games Saturday. And that first game will be against McCutcheon. At 11, they'll play a 130 or thereabouts game with Frankfurt. Outside a ball, count goes three and one. Three balls, one strike. Benton Central will play a home game. They'll play Friday. They'll play against Rossville at Benton Central. Working from a stretch, now the set. Here's the three one. Ground ball back up the middle. Good glove by Cavalowski. Cavalowski was kind of defending himself and uh, had stuck the glove out there, made the stop. But initial hit right there, Kavalowski probably had probably thought it was moving a lot faster than it really was. So they're two out. Nice batting pop of six stepping into bat, Lucas Gerke. Lucas Gerke, left handed batter's box. Carrying in looking at signals. Caleb Kavalowski, first pitch to Gerke. Inside high and tight. Ball one. Jackson Kane is on deck. 1-0 count to Gerke. Out of the set, here comes the pitch. They call a strike. Outside edge. Tell you what, when you take the bat away from the player, sometimes you don't need to take a bat to the batter's box. Working out of the set, here comes the pitch. Foul ball back to the screen. One ball, two strikes. Two outs. Wind is blowing in just a bit. It's picked up just recently. Here comes a pitch from Kavalowski. Back to a curveball. Misses outside. Two balls, two strikes. Lucas Gerke, the first baseman. Out of the set. Here comes the pitch. 2-2 two -two count. In the box with him. He spins away. Gets away from it. This guy's, guy's in a dugout. Says, uh, take a hit. He says, um, wear it. Gerke didn't want to wear one. It's 3 2 now. He could draw a walk. He's going to take a base hit. He's going to hit it to left field. We're going to back up the left fielder. And whoever went in for Kavalowski in left field makes the catch. So three outs. Three up, three down. Nice. At the end of six completes. Nice 10. Bison 2. And yes, we do again thank you for tuning in. And I'm. Apologize for the first inning and a half. We were trying to get on the air, but we had difficulty, a technological difficulty that I will never understand. That I I'm not too happy when something like that happens. I mean, you get to the ballpark and you're you're ready, plenty early, and I'm just trying to set down and thinking about the ball game, and you can't get logged in. I'm not too much complaining. I'm very happy. With um, Robbie Kendall, he heads up AudioSportsOnline.net. Uh, I've been with him for since 2008. So Robbie Kendall, what a quality gentleman, and um, I really 
uh, I am impressed by the many things that he can do for a 40-year-old guy. 40 years old. I got 17 years on him. But um, I still listen to everything he says. So they're getting warmed up. Pitchers rubber. We're going to go with a different pitcher right here. Jack Reisman. Right-handed hurler. He's going to come in try to try to close this ball game. And you, you need to face the same pitcher for six innings. You get kind of used to the way he pitches. And you see him a couple, maybe three times in the batter's box. Then um, Coach Borde comes in with a closer. A different pitcher. He brings it a different way. He's going from a lefty to a righty. And um, Jack Reisman can bring it. And he's going to try to see what he can do here in the bottom, excuse me, the top of the seventh inning. So we're listening to a little bit of Eagles. Maybe maybe it's Glenn Fry solo, but um, Glenn Fry, I miss him. Glenn Fry, that's Smuggler's Blues sign, or song. You remember that one? Smuggler's Blues has some good instrumental, but um, a couple of those words in there keeps me from playing those songs at a middle school basketball game when they let me be the DJ. But um, I can't play the, the, a couple of those words just to eliminate that song from making the earwaves of the middle school students. So Jack Reisman getting these final warm-up tosses. He's bringing it. Jack Reisman, as I mentioned, 200 pounds. Jack Reisman working that right-handed fastball. He's working from his, the stretch primarily. He is a relief pitcher. Jack Reisman, 6'5", 220. He's the largest player on Coach Bordenay's team. He's a big guy. I mentioned a couple of games ago that Albert Schwartz, basketball player, he's 6'5". Albert Schwartz started as a freshman, and he's uh, just now getting ready to graduate. Albert Schwartz, quite a player. So they got some more bullpen activity down there. Gus Sandberg is getting some reps in. He's at least getting some throws in during the ball game. Working out a stretch. Now the set. First pitch from Reisman. Bow back out of play. Grant Weiss. Grant Weiss, right-handed batter's box. Couple of that bats ago. Might have been lost that bat. He got a double. He got a double in an RPI. Grant Weiss adding his stats. And he's doing it legitimately. Here comes the pitch. And the call strike. Outside. I won't say outside edge, but they're going to call that a strike. 0-2 kill. So working from the stretch. Now the set position. Jack Reisman, the 0-2 pitch. Breaking pitch. Had to duck for that one. Grant Weiss would have been hit in the box. He got out of the way. I wouldn't want to get hit by an 80-plus mile-per-hour fastball. But he wants to bat. He could have taken that hit by pitch. But he wants to bat. Here's the one-two pitch to Weiss. Ground ball, shortstop. Hudson Gutwein tried to grab it. It rolled back up his arm. Couldn't make the play. So Grant Weiss going to reach by air. And his on-base percentage he is going up. So next batter going to step in. Dylan Ford going to step in. Where's number 10? For the Bison, right-handed batter. Runner at first base is Grant Weiss. Has a, just a small lead there. Pitch comes in, swinging a miss. Grant Weiss with a very short lead at first base. No balls, one strike. Nobody out. Bison batting in the top of the seventh. Here comes the pitch. Inside, ball, two, ball one. One ball, one strike. Dylan Ford. Started last night's game, played the whole game. Steps back in. 1-1 one, one count. Here's the pitch from Reisman. Above the zone. Ball two. Jackson Kane looks at first base for a snap throw. No throw made. Reisman going to step back in the rubber. Going to look at the signals from Jackson Kane. Out of the set. Here comes a 2-1 pitch. Outside edge. Strike called. 2-2. Grant Weiss stays right in there, right in the box, unless he's taking signals. 
Peering in, looking at the signal. Shakes one off. Out of the set. Time called. Weiss. Long time to set. Stand in the box. Reisman shook off the first signal from Jackson. And that signal came from the dugout, likely from Coach Bourdain. Here comes a 2-2 pitch. Here will take a shot left field. It's going to be down the line. It's going to be near the warning track. He's going to hold up at first base because the runner at second base had to hold. If that had been bases empty, that would have been another double for Grant Weiss. So Grant Weiss gets himself aboard. Swings a good bat for a sophomore. So I think the national stat leader on our, uh, an average, just a sophomore, 774 batting average, stepping into bat. Runners at first and second. Working from the stretch, check the second base out of set. Checks it again. Here comes the first pitch. Swing and a miss. Dylan Messer batting here in the top of the seventh. No balls, one strike. Jackson Kane jogs out. Having a conversation with Jack Reisman. Jackson Kane, 5'10". Jack Reisman, 6'5". It's about like talking to Zach E. Maybe. Probably a little bit more. So working from the stretch, now getting a signal. Out of set, check second base. Here comes the 0-1 to Musser. Inside, got out of the way, going to get by the glove. That's a wild pitch. Difficult pitch to handle. Base runners move up 90 feet. Grant Weiss is at second base. And I'm working right there at third base. His name escapes me. Jackson Kane having a little bit of a conversation there around home plate with Jack Reisman. Two aboard, second and third base for the Bison. Nobody out. 1-1 one, one count to Dylan Messer. The top of the seventh. It's a 10-2 ball game. Knights in front. Out of set, here comes a pitch from Reisman above the zone. Ball two. Two balls, one strike. Reisman, left-handed batter. Steps back in, plays a good center field position. Out of the set. Here comes the pitch from Reisman. Swung on, he'll foul this one the other way. Out of play. 2-2 two, two count to Musser. Dylan Musser step back in, left-handed batter's box. Two aboard, second and third base for the Bison. 2-2 two, two count. Nobody out. Top of the seventh. Working out of the stretch. Jack Reisman. Now the set. Here comes a 2-2 two, two pitch. Just above the zone. Ball three. 3-2 three, count. Reisman trying to find that release point. Looking to find that release point. And he'll be good. Working out of the stretch. Now the set position. Here comes a 3-2. Pop one up on the infield. It's going to be playable. It's going to be a foul territory. And Gavin Boutel makes the play. Gavin Boutel records the first out here in the inning. Kind of reminds me of Billy Owens. Billy Owens made the final catch at Victory Field two years ago to end the ball game on a line shot. So stepping in for the Bison, going to be number two, Ryan Foster. Ryan Foster plays the second base position. Right-handed batter. The face to righty, Jack Reisman, out of the stretch. Runners at second and third. Out of the set position. First pitch to Foster. Going to be a foul ball down the third baseline. It was just foul. It was scorching. Grant Weiss was in foul territory. If that ball would have hit him, it had been just nothing. So he stepped back in. Ryan Foster. No balls, one strike. One out. Time called. Jackson Kane. Going to call a rare timeout. Catcher calls timeout. While, the, while they're in the midst of the wide, I should say the stretch. 
home plate umpire walks out and joins in on the conversation. I don't really understand, but who am I to understand? Oh, one count stepping back in number two, Ryan Foster out of the stretch. Now the set, here comes the pitch. He's going to float one. Good shot. Got a lot of it. Got the sweet spot. Well foul. And the left field, well out of play. But he got the absolute sweet spot on that aluminum bat. They say an aluminum bat has a sweet spot area of 14 inches. They say a wooden bat has a sweet spot area of 8 inches. And that's why it's tough to get base hits in a wooden bat tournament. Steps back in. 0-2 count. Out of the stretch. Now the set. Here comes the pitch. Low for a ball. Good block by Jackson Kane. Runners stay put at second and third. One two count. Ryan Foster, right handed batter. Jack Reisman has his cleats. It got some mud in it. I saw him slip right there. Here comes the one two pitch. Breaking pitch. Gonna set him down looking. And I'm. It's going to be two outs here in the top of the seventh. Next batter going to step in, Tyler Clemmy. Tyler Clemmy had two aboard last night. He went home run to center field, but I think they were at first and second last night. They're at second and third now. We're going to have a stretch. Now the set is the pitch from Reisman. Swing a foul ball. Foul ball ends up in front of Jackson. Might have got him on the leg. Home plate umpire, customarily, you know, hand deliver a baseball to the pitcher, give Jackson Kane just a few moments to shake that off. So no balls, one strike. Tyler Clemmy. Tyler Clemmy did most of the pitching in this ball. Ian Kavalowski came in for short relief. Here comes the old one pitch. Outside a ball. One ball, one strike. Two out, top of the seventh inning. A wet game here today. You got to learn to play them all. Out of the set, here comes the pitch. Ground ball, shorts to first base. Going to get by the glove of Gerke. He's going to score one. Coming in to score is Grant Weiss from third base. They hold up the runner at third. And Tyler Clemmy has a base hit to right field and an RBI. I think that's RBI number nine. I did write down stats about two o'clock this afternoon. I think that's number nine RBI for Tyler Clemmy. That's in three ball games. He's a four hitter. I think the back he's the three hitter. Stepping in is Adrian Torres, number eleven. He is the four hitter. Right-handed batter facing the right, Jack Reisman. Out of the set. They're going to call time. It's called in the right-handed batter's box, Torres. And Jack Reisman are going to clean those cleats off on that on that spike board behind the rubber. We're going to have set. Here comes pitch to Torres. Going to be hit by pitch. Torres hit by pitch. He didn't want to be hit. He for sure wanted to bat. And then he's going to walk to first base. He's going to jog now. So bases are loaded. Timeout on the diamond. Coach Borden ain't going to walk out. He's going to talk with Jack Reisman. And then again, we'll mention this game is in part being brought to you by Arcadia Industrial Park and Self Storage. That's in Arcadia, Indiana. They have indoor, outdoor storage with flex storage availability. You can call to reserve your space for the safe, secure storage space location. That's Arcadia Industrial Park and Self Storage. Indoor storage for your boats, RVs, or your precious automobiles. It could be a Corvette. It could be a Mercedes. It could be a Jaguar, etc. That's I mean, outdoor storage always available. You can reach them by phone at 317-774-1500. That's 317-774-1500. Or go online at AIPSIndiana.com. 
bases loaded, stepping in, working from the stretch, Jack Reisman. Here's first pitch, low for a ball. I'm going to step back in. Braylon Holmes was number 18, right-handed batter. One ball, no strikes, working out of the stretch. Now the set. Here comes the pitch by Reisman. Outside, ball two. Braylon Holmes plays a good first base position for the Bison. 2-0 count, steps back in. Base is loaded. Two out, top of the seventh. Here's the pitch. Inside and tight, had to get out of the way. Count goes 3-0. Three balls, no strikes. Base is loaded for the Bison. Cerrillo count, here comes the pitch. Outside, ball four. So Braylon Holmes thought that might have been called a strike. Much of the game it was. But not that time. Bases loaded, they come in with one run. So Braylon Holmes draws a walk coming in to score. Is number 10, Dylan Ford. And uh, Coach Ford ain't going to walk back out. And um. Jack Reisman going to hand him the baseball. So Jack Reisman going to jog back to the dugout. Jog back to the dugout. Right. Reisman with a good contribution in today's ball game. So they're going to pick up some warm-up tosses right there on the pitcher's rubber. We're going to see Gus Sandberg. Gus Sandberg handed the baseball. He's a sophomore by class. Gus Sandberg. Where's number... 30. Gus Danberg has pitched in six innings. Six innings so far this season. He's faced 27 batters, has only thrown 87 pitches. He's given up seven hits. Yeah, he's hit one batter along the way. Gus Danberg has an ERA of 1.167. That's probably one of the lowest ERAs for the Knights. I'd be the lowest. So he gets some warm-up tosses with his buddies right behind him, standing in the grass. That's the way to do it. So out there in center field, three guys talking together, talking it over. My dad used to say, what are you guys having, a convention? And um, they're going to break up now. So the convention is breaking up. So one more warm-up toss, that was it. Stepping into bat, base is loaded. Base is loaded. Right fielder, Brylin Hedden. Right-handed batter facing the righty, Gus Sandberg. We're now stretched, now the set. First pitch to Hedden. Outside of ball, good block by Jackson Kane. He slides well, slides to the right, makes the block. Jackson Kane has had a lot of teaching for the catcher's position, and he pays good attention. Here comes the pitch. Swain a missed foul ball. Foul ball at home plate. Jackson picks it up off the ground. Gives it to the home plate up here. He tosses it over to first base dugout. One ball, one strike, two outs. Brylin Head did the catching last night in right field this this game. Piss comes in, blocks it again, Jackson Kane. And that's probably going to ask for another baseball. It's not like the MLB. On a dry day at an MLB game, that ball hits the, hits the dirt. They insert a brand new ball. Uh, I, I mentioned last night, I bet they go through a couple hundred baseballs in a game. So stepping back in the rubber, look at signals. Gus Sandberg out of the set. Here comes the 2-1 pitch. Quick get by Jackson. That was in the dirt again. They're coming in to score from third base. Is number four, Tyler Clemming. So three runs in here in the top of the seventh. It's a 10 5 ball game at the moment. So Ryland hit right handed bat box. Count goes three and one. Runners at second and third base. Rain's picking up a little bit. The wind's blowing in. 
Here comes the pitch. Ground ball, third base, Gavin Boutel claims it across the diamond, tall throw, and they get the put out with Lucas Gerke, and that's going to complete today's ball game. Six and a half innings. Knight's going to capture the win, 10-5 over the Bison. Bison and the Knights play baseball well together. So we thank you for tuning in, and we thank Coach Jared Hamill. Jared Hamill, what a quality coach. And Coach Tim Bordenay, very thankful for Coach Bordenay. We'll mention, uh, thank my wife back home. Thank Kit up here. Kit is a great guy to stand beside, and um, he has good quality conversation, too. He's working hard. You, you do the job, don't you? You try it yeah. He's humble as can be. But um, we're going to bow out of here. We thank my wife back home for making things good. We thank Robbie Kendall at Audio Sports Online for helping us get back on the air. And we appreciate that. So no matter if you're home or away, if you're doing the teaching and the learning, don't let it go. Keep the fire burning. Thank you.